All right. Yep. <laughs> What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. And welcome to my buddy Eric Perkins from the Perkins Builder Brothers channel. How you doing, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you again. Yeah. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah. yeah. Eric, in case you missed oh, it earlier in this series, helped out a ton during really a lot of this project early on. You know, getting the whole site laid out and doing a bunch of the framing work. So now he's back because we're going to film a video on kind of the essential tools you might need for, you know, getting into construction, building your own house, and even some of this would apply to just general home improvement. Yeah, and I love the setup here. This is actually how my dining room table looks at home usually. <laughs> Beautiful. So we've divided our tools into a couple different segments. We've got layout measuring, hand tools, power tools, and then nailers, a whole category for nailers because really there's a lot of nailers. There is. In the house. So uh, let's get this cleared off and we can start with section one, which is layout and measuring. Let's do it. All right, so category one, layout and measuring. Uh, these are obviously pretty critical. You know, make Very sure critical. your house ends up the right size, oh, yeah. nice and square and plumb and everything. Number one, can't do without it the good old tape measure. What do you have to say about tape measures? What what length do you prefer? Are there yeah, any features so you look for? For layout, like foundation, I would have a 25, a 30, a 50, and a 100. And that way you can pull diagonals across a large area. Which we uh, did here. Yep, and even on a house this size, the diagonal was, it was long. way over 25 yeah. feet. So from tape measure, moving on, probably one of the most used tools in, in any carpenter's tool belt is the good old speed square. You got any uh, pro tips here? Oh, I'm not gonna even dive in because <laughs> they got a whole. We video don't have 30 minutes, this. do we? Yeah. Well, okay. I'll link to. But that's a good one. The Perkins Brothers video on speed squares because these things can do a lot more than just checking for squares. Next on the list is kind of a combo, really. I, I think they're cheap enough where you should own both a string line and a chalk line. There's yes. obviously very different uses. The string line is gonna be just super useful when you're doing your initial layout work. Yeah. We used this so much when we were figuring out where all our footings were gonna go and setting the grade and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. My advice is to get new string line every job. Mm -hmm because it's gonna get nasty and tangled up and it's not worth the money usually no. to like try and get all the concrete mess and try yeah. to re-roll it. I mean, it seems like old technology. It is old next. String <laughs> don't lie, yeah. man. String lines is how you get things straight. Like yeah. still yeah. in 2021. Yeah. Even with lasers. That is still yeah. how you get the job done. So yeah. definitely. Definitely. And then a good chalk line, obviously super critical, especially when you're doing your framing layout work. I know you guys recommend this Tajima brand. Yeah. That's why I bought this. Uh, their chalk, it is not gonna wash off. So right, and let's talk about the Tajima. We're not sponsored by Tajima. I don't know if you are or not. No, I wish. But I'm not. They make really nice chalk lines that have a really fine yeah. and dense type threading here that gives you a really sharp line, yeah. which is important. So next on the list is levels and so obviously there's a lot of categories here you've got your traditional levels you've got laser levels you got rotary obviously a standard you know four or six foot level is going to be super super useful as well as a little torpedo level you will find yourself using that every yeah day. i keep a torpedo level in my left side of my tool belt yeah and then the super handy laser level. I mean, I just don't know what I would do without this bad boy. And I have multiples because what you'll find out is you'll want to have one set up and yeah. not want to move it, but then need another laser line somewhere else. So having a couple is not a bad yeah. idea. There's actually one mounted. There's one right above our head. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I don't think it's quite in frame. But. I'm a contractor and I yeah. built houses for years without laser levels, like laying out foundations with one of these like transit scope yeah. things where you look through like you're on the highway uh -huh. crew. They work, okay, yeah, but sure. it's a manual level. So you're using bubbles to manually level it. So there's some room for error. And also you have to have two guys. This, you set it up, it auto levels. You have a literally a laser line that is visible. Yep and you can run around and use it by yourself. So that's the huge advantage. Kind of one step up from that would be a rotary laser. Oh which, yeah. Which, you know, if you're laying out a large building or like when I was doing this retaining wall and patio, that was just unbelievably useful because sometimes if it's a super bright day, you can't see your yeah. line. So yes. having that reader, is amazing and those things are accurate to like less than an eighth of an inch over like hundreds, hundreds of feet. Of feet. Yeah. But those Level. jump way up in cost. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if Yeah, if I think the one I use is probably $2,000, yeah. so. So if you're building your first house, if, if you don't foresee doing that again, 
that would probably be a great thing to rent. Cool, all right, well, that, that's it for layout and measuring. Let's move on to hand tools. Before we move on, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Athletic Greens, and their daily supplement, AG1. So I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely put on a little pandemic weight by maybe ordering in too often and maybe having a few too many craft cocktails at my home bar. So as part of getting healthy again, I've decided to add AG1 to my diet and exercise plan. And AG1 is basically my go-to for anything missing from my diet, which is probably a decent amount since I'm such a picky eater. AG1 includes 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, all in one convenient daily serving. It takes the place of my daily multivitamin, and I know that with one scoop or packet every day, I'm good to go. AG1 supports gut health, immunity, energy, recovery, focus, and more, and I like to think of it as my daily dose of nutritional insurance. Also, AG1 is vegan, paleo, keto-friendly, gluten-free, and doesn't contain any junk like artificial sweeteners, herbicides, or pesticides. So if you're looking to get your greens, go to the link in the video description below to get started on your order. Athletic Greens is giving you guys a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, right here, and five free travel packs with your first purchase, so make sure to go and check it out. And thanks again to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this week's video, and let's get back to it. So hand tools, obviously very, very important. These are the types of tools that you're gonna be carrying on you all the time with your tool belt. If you wanna get anything done. Don't yeah, carry much. unless you wanna be spending all day looking around the job yeah. for your tools. Uh, number one, I mean, a hammer. You, you just can't do much of anything in construction without a good hammer. You're probably gonna want multiple types of hammers. You know, this one has a waffle face, so that's great for beating things into place and driving in big framing nails and stuff like that but this is going to mar surfaces. You know, you don't want 100%. to be tapping in your trim into place with one of these because it's just gonna jack it up. So you're gonna want a smooth face hammer, probably something a little lighter weight, a little easier to control. Yeah. There's a lot of different features you can get on newer hammers. Like a lot of these have a way to uh, a slot a nail like so, mm -hmm. and, and it'll hold the nail. That's a screw. Oh yeah. <laughs> You son of a, yeah, I know, I know it's a screw, Johnny. All right, so you just don't have a nail in your belt, bud. So you can use this to uh, start a nail somewhere you can't reach with both hands. Another feature is the straight claw. A lot of claws you see are the curved claw. I would recommend a straight claw or a rip claw. Uh, in construction, you can get a lot more done with that, using it uh, to get up under things and prize, or, yeah. or just, it's a rip claw, literally just shred stuff. Yeah, this one has a replaceable claw, because as I found out, uh, construction workers use their hammer claw for a lot of things that have no business <laughs> being done. <laughs> All right, next on the list, good utility knife. I mean, I would have a half dozen of these things because you- I do have a half dozen yeah, of them. Yeah, I mean, yep. you'll, you'll be using them for so much stuff. I mean, cutting string lines, cutting- Sharpening shoes. your carpenter's pencils. Yep. I mean, there's just obviously yeah. so and many. And I actually, things. I also carry a secondary yep. knife in my belt because sometimes I misplace that. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, a bear might run up on the job site. <laughs> <laughs> Next, a good chisel. I mean, really, you probably want a crappy chisel and a good set of chisels because mm -hmm. you can end up using a chisel for like a pry bar in a lot of cases or just kind of hacking away large amounts of material, which you wouldn't want to do with your like fancy set of chisels. No, and then, but you do need a good chisel yeah. when you want to just take the edge off of something yep. without even hitting it with a hammer if you just want to be able to yeah. <sighs> All right, next on the list is a little a little pry bar, nail puller, cat's paw. Especially when you're framing, this is gonna be your best friend because it's gonna help <laughs> you rectify all of your mistakes yeah. which are gonna happen. You're gonna have to take boards apart after you've yeah. fired in 100 framing nails. Basically, if you've never used one of these, uh, you get this under the head of the nail, smack it with a hammer and it will get under and then yep. you can pry it out. Compared to a you know more full-size pry bar, which is also on the list, you cannot pull nails that are buried in wood with this. this is more for lifting things and maybe pulling a nail that's already out that you need some more leverage yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you're, you're not going to be able to pull a single nail or carry that in your tool belt. No, that's a little bulky. <laughs> Just a so. little bulky. So next on the list, good screwdriver. I really like these ones that have multiple different bits in them because these days there are just so many different types of heads on there screws, are. especially when you're doing electrical work and stuff like that. Next on the list, a good handsaw for certain things like you know cutting six by sixes because you can't get all the way through that. With That's a right. Saw. Or sometimes you can't cut all the way into the notch. If you didn't realize it, circular saws yep. have circular blades, so you can't cut in tight. This is a good way to cleanly get it done. Definitely. Cool. All right. Well, let's reset and move on to power tools. 
Next up on the list is power tools, which obviously is probably gonna be the majority of the list here. So uh, I guess we'll start from, I think probably one of the most used possible framing and construction tools, the circular saw. You nailed it. The circular saws I've had in the past, the blades were a little small, they were a little underpowered. So if you're trying to do things like rip sheathing and mm -hmm. stuff like that, they're just not gonna do it. Or they're gonna do it so slowly that it's not worth having. Seven and a quarter blade, something that takes a big honking battery. It's got a rafter hook. A lot of the features you'd look for. What else do you look for in a circular saw? I like the right hand blade. If you didn't know, you can get the cordless saws with the blade on the left. But the mindset behind this is that if you're right-handed, your materials here and the main part of the base of the saw is not sitting on the off cut as yep. you're cutting. Which makes a very big difference. And it's <laughs> something that I didn't realize for a while and like, why does this saw feel awkward to use and this one not? Yeah. And it's because the blade was on the other side and I'm left handed. I don't know if you want to get into all this like right now, but these are all cordless. There yes. is no cords. No cords. On any of we these. We used almost no cords to build this entire house. Yeah. I would say this is only recently possible to be all cordless and still get as much done as if you yeah. had corded tools like the technology of the batteries and just how powerful they are. So obviously batteries are pretty expensive. So you'll notice that I have all one brand here. You probably don't want to have like six different cordless power tool That's brands. That's a good point. Because otherwise you're going to be spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on batteries. All right, so next on the list, the good old Sawzall or reciprocating saw for demo work. Again, for tearing out studs that they were put in the wrong place, cutting through nails, all that kind of stuff. Fixing mistakes. Yeah, you can buy all kinds of different blades, different lengths, different you know metal types, whether that's carbide or tool steel. They make some more compact versions, which I think are super handy too, yeah. if you're in a tighter spot. More of like a one-handed. Yeah, because this one's kind of, kind of big, but for, you know, aggressive demo work, this is pretty yeah. awesome. Next on the list, drill and impact driver. I mean, I, I don't know what you would do, especially in this day and age. I feel like impact drivers are just one of the most used tools on a job site. They are, and I actually carry one of these on my belt right here at all times. Yeah. You can do a lot of things with a screw, aka the incline plane fastener, yep. as my brother likes to say. It has the ability to draw material yes. tight. If you're gonna use screws though for framing, look at the screws. Some are structural and some are not. So don't build your whole house with screws and then later find out use non-structural screws. Yeah. Don't use drywall screws. Yeah, there's a lot of screws in all the houses we build. As far as a drill, <laughs> I would highly recommend getting a hammer drill. Uh, just to have the option to drill into masonry or concrete because you'll probably need to do that in this day and age most houses are built with some concrete in them if you're going to be doing a lot of concrete work like you know a big slab on grade foundation or something like that you might consider getting an sds drill i don't think that was 100 percent necessary on this particular project yeah here you go say hello to my little friend there. we did use one we did use one because it was fun and because what I does it. sds stand for i don't know i don't either Slotted drive shaft or slotted drive system. <laughs> okay, I would not the have guessed. You know. Oh, it's because that's, you know, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the bit, it's slotted. slotted. Totally makes sense. But one thing I'll mention about these hammer drills, you can see actually it has a, a hammer <laughs> on the drill, just so you're just so you know. certain that's a mm -hmm. hammer drill. In the hammer mode, it drills and hammers, and that's what goes through concrete is the hammer in action. And it makes that super pleasant noise that... <laughs> That horrible <laughs> high-pitched screeching. Maybe some drill accessories, impact driver accessories. Uh, I'm a big fan of this magnetic bit holder. I have this on every one of my impact drivers because it's nice to have all those bits available yeah. to you. You don't want to lose your bits, but... No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> and then also a good bit holder. It's so annoying when you take your impact driver back and the bit stays with the screw. That yeah, is just that is annoying. What brand is that? That's really this nice. This is Weera. I, yeah. I love their stuff. So I'll, I'll link to all this stuff in the video description yeah. below. All right, next on the list, the awesome oscillating multi-tool and I mean really this especially if you're doing home improvement stuff absolutely need one of these because it's got so many different blade and attachment types you can do so much with it you can sand with them you can not to mention all the cutting features you know cutting drywall they're awesome yeah and and we again building for as long as we have did a lot of projects without one of these the first time I got my hands on one it was like 
I mean, it just makes light work of nearly impossible tight cuts. Yes. So you can literally just plunge straight into a material yeah. uh, without damaging any of the other material around it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to borrow this bun. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's going, it'll fit in my pocket uh, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next on the list, the handheld electric planer. And you could probably put a traditional hand plane in here too. Sure. Uh, if you need to do some major stock removal though, electric planer is the way to go. Flattening subfloors, flushing up beams, flushing up joists. Many people don't realize that dimensional type lumber it doesn't all come in the same dimension when no. it, even when it, you think it should. Especially like Especially treated. Yeah, so like a two by 12 treated deck joist, some of them might be 11 inches and some might be 11 and three quarters. Yeah. That's a great tool for that. And cordless so that you're not oh, yeah. tripping over the cord as you're kind of scampering around on joists with no flooring on them. <laughs> yes. It's really Always sketchy. Always good. All right, next on the list, another saw, the jigsaw. It might seem like we have a lot of saws here and. The jigsaw might not be totally necessary all the time, but I think for especially some tasks, flooring, obviously this kind of wall paneling. Yeah, work. for really a, like any kind of finished material where yeah. you're gonna have to, that's wood, yep. that you're gonna have to cut around, say receptacles, yep. can trims. Mm -hmm. Sawing you know. cabinetry, you know, cutting yep. holes for outlet boxes. Yes. Stuff. You can also cut metal, uh, thinner metal with jigsaws. Oh, which absolutely. Can be super handy. Last on the kind of handheld power tools is the mighty angle grinder. Cutting rebar. Yep. I mean, anytime you need to cut steel, it is just so, so handy. Yeah, and this is the giant version. Yeah, you can get smaller. Yeah, uh, what size disc is that? It's a six. Okay, so your standard one you'd pick up, say, at a box store, is I think a four inch yeah, disc. Four and a half. This is a larger one. Uh, you're gonna have a lot higher blade speed at the rim, and so you're gonna cut faster. Yep. So this was super fun. As creators, this is the one where I'm, hold on, Johnny, <laughs> slow-mo, and yes. there's <laughs> sparks, sparks and, everywhere. Yeah, like that was awesome. This is nice because it's one of the only tools that's gonna cut metal fast. Yep. And tile. I used the angle grinder a ton when I was doing the kind of inside corner cuts on mm -hmm. tile work. Well, that's a nice array of hand tools. There's a couple more. There are. Yeah. So a couple I would call, I guess, stationary power tools. Number one, the miter saw, obviously super, super useful. I was actually surprised that we didn't use that more during framing. Yeah, uh, the thing with the miter saw is you're moving the material to yeah. match the saw, whereas a saw like this, you're moving the saw to the ends of the material. So if you're cutting off mostly in cuts, I like the skill saw if you're doing more like center cuts of boards where it'll actually bounce on your miter stand. Mm -hmm. I like to use the miter saw, but it's really hard to get a, uh, a board squared into a miter saw base if you've got like 16 yeah. feet of board sticking out the other end, Definitely. which is pretty common. Yeah. The other big, obviously stationary tool would be the table saw. I mean, I think you could, and obviously people have gotten by with circular saws. Yeah, you can do rip cuts. Yeah. There's rip guides, you can snap line, rip, but it's not gonna be as straight no. or as accurate or as fast yep. as having a nice table saw. That's probably the most important thing to look for with a table saw. Yeah. Is, How is, is the, the fence? fence good? Yeah, is the fence good? Is it if gonna, it's not square yeah. or if it's going to slide around, Ryobi, uh, you know, <laughs> that's probably not something you want. When I bought the last one, I literally went into a tool store yeah. and I just locked all the fences on them and then I hit them yeah. with my fist to mm -hmm. see which one moved. Yes. Because if you're running really heavy stock, the, the force, uh, if you're trying to straighten it, you can slide that fence and then your rip starts to get off. I gotta chime in one last thing while okay. we get the power tools out. Blades, mm. okay. Yeah. If you had a dull blade on this, like really dull, it would not even cut through a single two by four. Yep. If you've got a really sharp blade on it, it's gonna go through like butter. Yep. And with all these tools, I really recommend inspecting you know, the sharpness of your blades, see if you've hit a nail, see if there's teeth missing. You're really gonna struggle if your blades are dull and you're really gonna be happy if yes. they're sharp. And my dad was notorious. Yeah, for especially this. like hole saws. Yeah. I mean, people just use their hole saws till it's just like basically smoking. Yeah. So if you see smoke, yeah. stop. Stop, there's something wrong. Yes. Your, your blade should not be like smoking, catching your material on fire. Generally. Ideally. <laughs> Okay, so on to nailers. Obviously pretty dang important in uh, the construction of a house and there's a bunch of different types. There is. <laughs> I, I would say number one obviously is gonna be the framing nailer. You'd be hard pressed to build a house without one of these. I've done it. You it don't so, wanna do it. No, yeah. <laughs> no. This is so, so much faster. And again, you'll notice this is cordless. So obviously that's a huge debate in the world of nailers, pneumatic versus cordless. 
What do you think about it? So I've used pneumatic nailers, framing nailers, yeah. for decades now. After hand nailing houses together for a little while with my dad, which was worse. Yeah. What you're gonna get with the cordless is a little bit slower of a nailer, but I'm gonna argue that having to deal with an air hose, the aggravation of that, and how air hoses tangle around everything, no matter yes. What you're doing, I like the cordless better. Not to mention the, the kind of safety factor, especially if you're up high on a roof or you got that pneumatic hose on the sub Yeah, floor, it's something you can- it's, You just roll right over it. On roofs, they're way safer, yeah. yeah. Next on the nailer list, and, and this is probably one you could rent, is a siding nailer. And so unless you plan on building a lot of houses, probably don't need to own one of these, but this uses a totally different type of nail from a framing nailer. They come on these big coils. I'm not sure how many times more nails that is than a straight clip, but it's massively more in quantity, and so you can get a lot more work done. And these are also ring shank, so they're gonna be more resistant to being pulled out, which obviously on siding, very important. You really wanna use the right kind of nails for the job. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The next tool, the roofing nailer. If you're gonna be installing your own shingles, probably worth purchasing one, certainly, obviously. Let's talk about renting. installing your own shingles. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. A lot of work, miserable work, up on a roof. I mean, just zero fun to be had. Was there any shade up there? No shade, you know, so everything's sliding off. If you forget something, you gotta climb all the way down the ladder and back up. Thank the God, we're done with that. But uh, once again, cordless, 100% recommended because I was able to shingle this whole roof with like three batteries, which That's is just not bad. incredible. And no hoses to deal with. Once again, this is a coil nailer, uses a different type of nail, roofing nails. And one other major thing is it has rubber bumpers in yep. several places. So it doesn't slide off the roof. Exactly, so when you set it down, <laughs> it doesn't go yep. off the roof. So that's an important design feature. Uh, and then finally in the nailers category would be your more kind of finished nailers. This is a finished nailer. You also have brad nailers, pin nailers. There's a bunch kind of in that category, but for putting up trim, any kind of fine detailed work, uh, putting in flooring, a finish and brad nailer, I would consider it. Let's talk about this. There's all different gauges, like you mentioned, an yep. 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 15 gauge, pin. What you have here is a 16, and would you recommend that if you just could buy one? I think that would be the one to have. Okay. Because you could do some of like the siding nailing that we did. You can do all of your trim work, and the holes aren't gonna be so big that they're gonna be a pain to fill. You could certainly use that for flooring when you got a face nail around the perimeter of the room. But once again, I think cordless is the way to go on this kind of stuff. Why does it matter so much, you might be asking? Well, when you're doing finished work, you're dragging air hoses through a semi-finished house. That means if they have mud or crud on them, you're dragging them across finished floors or around door jams. And I wanted to get in a big argument with you about, <laughs> about your one selection, but I agree yeah. that if you could only have one, the 16 gauge straight, this uses a straight clip. Yep. The other ones are nice to have, but if yeah. you just have one, this will shoot one and a half, two inch and two and a half inch nails, which will get you a long way down the road building something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There are a couple of honorable mentions that we wanted to Ooh, point out. Okay, let's uh, do that. Yeah, so yeah. number one, if you're gonna be doing your own tile work, a good Ooh. quality wet saw. I mean, yeah. just don't try to do tile work without it. The wet saw, basically it keeps the blade cool, mm -hmm. uh, it keeps the dust down, yep. uh, gives you cleaner cuts, less frustration. Tile can be frustrating to start with. <laughs> So, Always. Yeah. yeah so. So. And you may be able to rent a tile saw. You definitely like can rent shop. a tile saw. And so this whole list, I would say, are, are kind of rentable tools okay. for sure. Uh, next on the list would be an SDS drill, which we mentioned a little earlier. Sliding drill s slot? Oh, yeah. Slotted drill system. Dang, I can't, we just looked it up. Slotted drive shaft. Oh, there it is. And uh, listen, if you don't have all these tools, you just kind of find a buddy that's got yeah, them, okay? Just I just call Johnny and Johnny's rental service. I'm like, <laughs> hey bud, uh, you got that flooring nailer? You using that today? So flooring nailer, that was next on oh, the list. Oh, okay, yeah. Because again, if you're not planning on doing a lot of flooring work, buying a flooring nailer is probably not absolutely necessary, but- yeah. It is necessary for installing floors. Yes, definitely. So the place we bought the flooring at does rent those. Okay. We, we own one because we do a lot of floors, but yeah. yeah, without that, you would just be- Similar in that category would be drywall installation tools, you know, a collated screw gun and a roto zip. Those are both absolutely. super important for putting up drywall. But again, if you're contracting that out, 
you don't need to own it. Yeah, and we contract that out even though we do most things ourselves yeah. because the guys that do it are so fast. Oh, it's, it's incredible. It's not worth doing yourself, honestly. Most of the time not. And then the last one, I would say a router, a good trim router. Probably not 100% essential, but you know, for flushing up sheathing around window openings. You can actually just let it hang in there, yep. run your router around, and it's a perfect clean cut. It looks Super like you're fast. a pro. I use a trim router here. Oh, yeah. wow. With a small little spiral flush trim bit and okay. it made super quick work. Boom. I used it to add an edge profile on the, the Trex, the decking. Mm -hmm. You know, try to get the rip pieces to match nice up. Nice touch. And again, if you're a woodworker watching this, you probably already own one. You're probably like, what's a router? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I got one. It's on my computer, bud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's the list. If you guys think we missed anything, let me know in the comments, but I think this is definitely at least a very good starting point. It's your contractor starter kit yeah, right here. This is it. <laughs> no, I think that's a pretty good list. I've been building houses 20 years, and that's why I had to come along and make sure he got this thing right. And there are other things like ladders and scaffolding and that kind of thing, but they're not tools. Hopefully this is helpful. Yeah, and if you guys aren't already subscribed to the Perkins Builder Brothers, definitely go check them out. If you're not subscribed to me, definitely go ahead and do so. Ring the oh, notification bell. Oh yeah, I am. Bell. Subscribe. Oh yeah. Notifications. <laughs> and uh, in case you want to purchase any of these tools, I'll have links to everything down in the video description below. And last, I want to say a big shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon and my YouTube members. Thank you guys so much. And I guess until next week, happy building. Thanks for building with us. Sweet. That was good. Yeah, that was, that was easy. You ever talked to a counselor? about this? My name's Johnny, I have a tool problem. <laughs>